We're at the Morningstar Investment Conference. I'm speaking with Bobby Blue, senior analyst. He just hosted a session. Bobby, what was the session about? Uh, we had two really great allocators. So managers that invest both in equities and bonds, uh, talking to them about where they're investing in the world. Obviously, a lot of market narratives out there right now. We try to make sense of some of those and really dig into where they're positioning their really world allocation strategies right now around the world. And so where are the opportunities today around the world based on that session? Well, they saw a couple different uh, tracks. So really, the narrative was uh, it's not as bad as it looks. So obviously, we've had a pretty sharp sell off uh, in some of the high flying tech names, even some of the, the, the generals uh, call it the, the fang stocks that have really carried the market the past few years. Um, they're seeing opportunities in some of these names. They've come down quite a bit, uh, but the businesses really haven't changed that much. So both Kate and David um, are starting to position their portfolios in some of these clear tech names that have really gotten beaten down. Um, and on the flip side, on the fixed income part of their portfolio, they're seeing opportunities a little further out of the curve on the duration side. Um, so while they're still a little bit underweight traditionally to where they might have been, call it five years ago, uh, they are starting to see some opportunities. And David even mentioned that he's bought uh, treasuries for the first time since 2018 in the portfolio. Um, so lots of opportunities out there, um, despite some of the negative headlines. Wow. Long duration, long tech stocks. It's like it's 2019 all over again. 60, 40 is back. <laughs> awesome. So uh, as you think back on that session, you talked about the opportunities that are out there. What about the risks in the markets today? Well, look, there's a lot out there. And it, whenever you have the market drop 15%, there's a reason for it. There's a reason that investors are scared and they're selling their assets. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all of these risks are going to come to fruition. So, you know, there is the risk of a recession down the line. There's the risk of central, brand, central bank policy um, leading to a hard landing and causing that recession. Um, the risk that inflation remains elevate. All of these are real risks. That's why the market's falling. Um, pricing the probability of that risk is where these investors come in and where they are able to really find that opportunity. So, you know, coming back to it, there are real risks in the market right now. We can't deny that. Um, but the probability of those probably a little higher uh, in the price action than what actually uh, the likelihood of that coming to fruition. So Bobby and I were speaking before the interview, and his role at Morningstar has him squarely in the hairs of liquid alts and specifically hard assets. So I didn't want to miss this opportunity to, to go a little bit deeper on that and nerd out. When you look at the hard asset landscape, ideally you're trying to hedge some inflation, yeah. right? What do you have your eyes on today? So at Morningstar, we really recommend and like diversified real asset strategies. So these are allocation multi-asset portfolios where a manager is designing a portfolio specifically to invest in real assets so they're investing in commodities natural resource equities treasury inflation protected securities all of these inflationary hedges they're doing that and putting it all in one strategy for you um, these are niche assets so it can be difficult for an advisor an individual investor to actually go in uh, and figure out how to allocate to these really niche strategy types. So a diversified real asset manager does that work for you. So they're picking the assets, they're setting the strategic allocations, they're picking the individual names, and then they're tactically allocating amongst those sectors. So you're really getting a lot of expertise, managers that spend all of their time focused on these real assets. Uh, and we think that's one of the best way to place that sector, uh, just given a lot of the intricacies and in looking at some of these uh, sectors that you know, frankly, investors aren't spending much of their day, uh, much of their year really studying these these hard asset areas. Bobby, there's a lot of intricacies. There's also a lot of emotion from the gold bugs yeah. to uh, some of the other real asset classes. You end up with this almost fandom around it. Diversification always makes sense. But I got to push a little bit. When you look at that space, what do you think today advisors should be paying attention to inside of their diversified portfolio as it relates to real assets? I think that, well, one, the diversified real asset strategies, believe it or not, they are pretty well diversified and they are uh, relatively uncorrelated to other parts of the portfolio when designed correctly. Um, so some of our higher conviction strategies have really low correlation to equities and low correlations to fixed income. So you can slot that into a portfolio, put it in a strategic allocation, um, and it can really add 
to your portfolio in a risk adjusted manner. Uh, as far as specific sectors, again, it is really challenging to do the due diligence and carve out a space in your strategic allocation for some of these niche sectors. Uh, but some of the most diversifying, some of the most uncorrelated, these are things like commodities, tips, uh, even real estate can prove to be uncorrelated over a very long time horizon. So um, what we would emphasize when you're looking at these sectors is to not only understand uh, their inflationary hedging benefits, but also how correlated are they to the rest of your portfolio? And those assets that I mentioned, those are some of the most diversifying. Okay. What are your thoughts around the ETN structure for commodity products? That can be... Uh, a, a, that's one way that a lot of different investors access this space. We would prefer to see some of the more uh, um, ETFs that access the commodities via the futures contracts. Um, we've seen a lot of negative press around ETNs, a lot of uh, willy nilly closure of them. Um, we would recommend that investors move a little bit more into the ETF side or mutual funds, which offer uh, really good exposure to a broad basket of commodities as well. And then do digital assets show up on your radar in this space? Believe it or not, there are a couple of commodity strategies that are looking at Bitcoin futures. Um, whether or not we have an explicit view on that, we haven't developed one yet. But it is interesting that some of our uh, top rated managers are starting to carve out a space or at least are studying the space to see how it might fit into their portfolio. These are futures contracts and they trade on uh, you know, the same exchanges that um, other commodity contracts trade on. So um, the out justification for a manager to allocate to that um, makes a lot of sense. Where you are seeing it a lot more is in the systematic trend space. So managed futures managers are allocating to some of these Bitcoin products um, and just riding the trend. Yeah. When, when they launched that futures contract, you could kind of see that coming. Is that leading to some of the volatility potentially? I don't know about that. I think that, uh, frankly, the, the futures contract adds a little bit more legitimacy. It probably brought in more institutional players into this space. If anything, that's going to dampen the volatility. Um, you know, Bitcoin is an extremely volatile asset class, uh, to say the least. Um, and it's still fairly novel in the sense that it's really tough to pin down the true risk of return characteristics of it, how that's going to behave over uh, the next three, five years. Uh, all that out and predict what types of exposures that's going to give you, what type of volatility it's going to give you. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I appreciate you coming on after your big, big uh, presentation a minute ago. If you want to catch all the sessions from today, tomorrow and Wednesday, head over to Morningstar and sign up for a virtual pass. Thanks again.